In a world plagued by generic noise, one goblin can save us all. Hey gang, just to let you know, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipsideGaming.com and OriginalMagicArt.store. Using the code gets you 10% off orders $10 or more, and you get to help out the channel at the same time. I also want to let you guys know that Flipside Gaming is doing another giveaway, this time for a box of Ultimate Masters. Anyone who uses my promo code MTGMUDSTA for orders over $10 or more will be entered to win. There's one entry per person, so I wish you good luck, and please be sure to let me know what box topper you get when you win. Alrighty, we've got Matt playing Dino Daddy this week, Gazath, keeping Forerunner of the Empire, Rites of Flourishing, Plains, a Mountain, a Forest, and Sunhome, Fortress of the Legion. I am playing my Titania deck, keeping four snow-covered forests, Green Sun Zenith, World Breaker, and Natural Order. Trevor is playing his Zergo deck, keeping a Dark Stew Mutation, a Plains, a Day of Judgment, an Orzhov Signet, an Isolated Chapel, Azor's Gateway, and a Rugged Prairie. And last but not least, we have Mike playing Olivia, keeping a Rakdos Guildgate, Terramorphic Expanse, Temple of Malice, Tyrant's Familiar, Dread Return, Buried Alive, and a Terminate. I win the die roll, and I start us off. I play Snow-Covered Forest, and I cast Green Sun Zenith for zero to go and find a Dryad Arbor. Matt plays a Forest, passing. Mike plays an Evolving Wilds, and passes. Trevor plays a Plains, and rushes me to find my land. I play a Snow-Covered Forest, and I pass. Matt plays a Mountain, passing. Mike plays a Terramorphic Expanse too quickly for me, as I'd meant to cast a Realms Uncharted at the end of Matt's turn. I grab Command Beacon, Wooded Foothills, Ghost Quarter, and Nykthos. Matt gives me the Wooded Foothills and Ghost Quarter, and Mike then cracks his Terramorphic and casts a Carrion Feeder before passing. Trevor plays an Isolated Chapel and casts a Rakdos Signet and passes to me. I cast a Corsair of Crufix in my main phase and reveal Snow-Covered Forest off the top, playing it and gaining one life. I then pass to Matt. Matt plays a Plains and he casts Rites of Flourishing. He then plays a Sunhome as his extra land and he passes. Mike draws two and plays a Rakdos Guildgate and then Temple of Malice, scrying the card and putting it to bottom. Trevor draws two and casts an Orzhov Signet and then plays a Rugged Prairie. We then see an Azor's Gateway followed by a Temple of Triumph and Trevor passes. I draw two and reveal Azusa off the top. I play a Wooded Foothills, gaining one as it comes in. I then crack it, taking one to go and find a Snow-Covered Forest and gain one, so I net zero. I then cast Natural Order, sacrificing the Dryad Arbor to go and find a Woodland Bellower. This lets me tutor for Ramunap Excavator, and I put it onto the field, and I pass my turn. Matt plays a Forest, and he casts his Forerunner of the Empire, going to search for a Dinosaur. Mike plays a Swamp and a Mountain, and he casts Armillary Sphere. He then swings the Feeder at Trevor for one. At the end of turn, Trevor activates his Gateway, drawing one and exiling Tragic Arrogance. Trevor plays a Chromatic Lantern in his main phase, and follows it up with a Day of Judgment. He then passes to me. I draw two, and I play a Bant Panorama, and then the Ghost Quarter. I then bring out Titania, and return Wooded Foothills, passing to Matt. Matt casts Elemental Bond, and passes. At the end of his turn, Mike cracks the Sphere to find two basics. Mike draws two, and he plays another mountain in another swamp. He then drops a Balefire Dragon, and he passes to Trevor. Trevor plays his own Ghost Quarter, and he casts Elspeth's Sun's Champion. He downticks her to blow up all the big creatures, and Trevor then activates his gateway again, drawing, and then exiling Darksteel Mutation. He then plays a swamp, and casts Key to the City. At the end of turn, I crack my Wooded Foothills and Bant Panorama to go and grab two more Snow-Covered Forests. I draw two and play two more lands, and I cast Green Sun Zenith once more, where X is three. I grab Eternal Witness, and this brings back my natural order. I then cast Nissa Vital Force, an upticker to untap a forest, and then pass to Matt. Matt plays a Cinder Glade, and he casts a Wayward Sword Tooth. He draws from the Bond Trigger as it enters, and he passes to Mike. Mike plays a Coom Refuge, gaining one. He then casts a Felwar Stone, and he brings out a Tyrant's Familiar. Moving to combat, he swings a familiar at Nyssa, who takes the hit for 5. Trevor casts a Stone Hewer Giant in his main phase, and upticks Elspeth to make some soldier tokens. He then passes to me. 
I draw two cards and play two more snow-covered forests, casting a world breaker. On cast, I get to exile Trevor's key to the city because an unblockable Zergo is a bad Zergo. Up ticking Nissa, I animate a forest and smack Mike with it for five. Matt can't seem to draw lands apparently after how many extra draws? He has to cast a Cultivate which is kinda sad, and he goes to grab a basic for the field and plays one from his hand. He now has City's Blessing, and he passes turn. Mike casts Olivia in his main phase, and we then see a Dread Return bring back the Balefire Dragon. This triggers Olivia when it enters the battlefield, and Mike discards a Zathrid Demon. This gives the Balefire Dragon a plus one plus one counter, haste, and also makes it a vampire. Neat. Mike then swings a Tyrant at Nyssa, and the Balefire at Elspeth. With the attackers declared, the Tyrant triggers and kills my World Breaker. Trevor then casts Utter End before moving to damage to exile the Balefire, and sadly my Nyssa is the only Planeswalker to die this turn. For Trevor's turn, he casts a Sword of Light and Shadow in his main phase, paying to equip it onto the Stone Hewer. With the equip trigger on the stack, Matt casts Swords to Plowshares, and Trevor activates the Stone Hewer's ability. Trevor gets a Tutor 4 and put onto the field Sword of War and Peace, which then goes onto the Stone Hewer and gives it protection from white. This fizzles the sword, and this also kind of fizzles any chance for Trevor to really attack. So, he upticks Elspeth, and he passes turn. I play a Jun Panorama as my only land for turn, and cast Splendid Reclamation. I only really get to bring back a few lands, and they all come in tapped. I then recast Natural Order, sacrificing the Dryad Arbor that has recently come back, and I bring out Kamal. Matt draws two and plays a Mountain and a Rogue's Passage. We then see the Dino Daddy himself hit the field, and Kashath roars with triumph as Matt draws from the Bond Trigger. Matt decides to swing his commander at Trevor, who tries to suggest that he goes somewhere else. Trevor declares that all of his soldiers will take one for the team, and Matt then casts Berserk before moving to damage. Trevor then takes 8 commander damage, and Kashath dies. This also triggers Kashath's ability, and Matt gets to flip over 8 cards off the top, keeping any dinosaurs. He gets way too many good dinosaurs, and jumps to 74 life thanks to the Verdant Sun's avatar triggers. He also gets to draw 5 cards from the Bond's triggers, and Matt plays a Temple of the False God. Matt then has to discard his turn, and he remembers he's the Monarch, drawing at the end of his turn. Mike draws two, and moves to combat. He swings the Tyrant at Matt, and he has the Tyrant's trigger kill the Regal Behemoth. Mike then casts a Soul Ring, and uses the Soul Ring to help cast Solemn Simulacrum. Mike has also gained the Monarchy, and he draws at the end of turn, while I choose to sacrifice my Ghost Quarter to blow up Matt's Temple of the False God. Because that three mana looks an awful lot like Teferi's protection to me. Trevor plays a strip mine, and he casts a cigar as aid. We then see a Goto hit the field, and I'm a little scared that he's going to go grab Helm of the Host. With Goto's search trigger on the stack, I cast Nature's Claim to blow up Sigurd as aid, and Trevor gains four. Trevor goes and grabs Trailblazer Boots instead, and moving to combat, he swings a Stone Hewer Giant at me, and before blockers, activates the giant's ability to go and find Sword of Feast and Famine, hopefully making his creature unblockable for me. I in turn activate Kamal, turning one of my forests into a 1-1 creature, and chump the giant. Trevor then down ticks Elspeth in his second main phase, and passes turn. I draw two, and play Terramorphic Expanse, and recast Titania. I get to bring back my Ghost Quarter, and I pass to Matt. Matt draws two, and plays a Command Tower. He brings out the standard all-star, Carnage Tyrant, drawing from the Bonds Trigger. Matt then casts Traverse the Outlands, a card I really undervalued from Commander 2017. He gets to go and grab 7 basics, which is almost all that are left in his library. Mike draws 2 and plays a Mountain. He casts Felden in his main phase, and with the Olivia Trigger on the stack, Trevor casts Path to Exile to exile Felden. Mike goes and grabs the Swamp, and then he casts Beacon of Unrest, bringing back the Tyrant's Familiar. Mike then shuffles the beacon into his library, and moving to combat, he swings the Tyrant at Trevor, dealing 7 to Goto, and then 7 to Trevor with the Tyrant itself. He passes, and at the end of turn, draws from being the Monarch. Trevor's turn has him bringing out Zergo, who wishes his biceps were as big as Trevor's. Trevor then puts the Sword of Feast and Famine, and the Trailblazer's boots onto Zergo, and moves to combat. He swings Zergo at Mike for 9, and with the untapped trigger from the sword on the stack, Trevor taps his gateway to draw a card and exiles Commander Sphere. Trevor also becomes the Monarch as a result, and gets to untap his lands, while Mike discards Udvara Hellkite. 
Trevor then puts the rest of the swords onto Zergo, and he then casts Thalia, Heretic Cathar. He passes to me, and at the end of turn, I cast Court of Calling, where X is 1, to go and find a Sylvan Safekeeper. Trevor also remembers to draw from the Monarch Trigger, and I boldly sacrifice 14 lands to get 14 5-3 Elemental Tokens. I draw 2, and for once I don't seem to hit any lands. I need to do some math, something I'm renownedly bad at, and I swing 8 Elementals at Trevor, and 6 at Matt. The guys block what they can, and Matt loses 25, while Trevor is facing down lethal. Since he's going out anyway, Trevor decides to use a strip mine and Ghost Quarter to tank two of my lands. This gives me two more elemental tokens that come in tapped. After combat damage is done, I also become the Monarch, and at the end of my turn, draw a card. And unfortunately, as awkward as it is, I forgot to search for a forest with Trevor's Ghost Quarter trigger. Matt plays a Temple of Plenty, scrying one, and he brings back out his commander, drawing from the elemental bond trigger. He then casts a True Conviction, which is just, you know, super. He swings both of his dinosaurs at me, and thankfully Mike comes to my rescue, terminating Gishath before it connects. I still get hit by the Carnage Tyrant, taking 14 while Matt gains 14. Matt then also becomes the Monarch, and drawing at the end of turn, he has to discard and pitch his stomping ground. Mike casts a Viscera Seer, and he casts Reforce the Soul. With the spell in the stack, Matt casts Crows and Grip to blow up Mike's Soul Ring. We then discard our hand and draw a new 7. Mike is then able to cast Beacon of Unrest once more, having redrawn it at some point, to bring back his Udvara Hellkite. He discards Phyrexian Plague Lord to give the dragon haste, a plus one plus one counter, and make it into a vampire thanks to Olivia. He swings both of his dragons at Matt for 13, and gains two more dragon tokens as they swing from the Udvara triggers. In his second main phase, Mike then casts Rakdos, Lord of Riots, and passes to me. I draw two and play two lands, and I cast a Kur Tribe Elder. I then try and think if I can kill Matt and Mike both, and I quickly do some maths, as it's getting late and everyone wants to head out. So, I swing 8 tokens at Matt, and the rest at Mike. Mike blocks with a bunch of stuff, and before damage, sacrifices the Solemn, scrying, and then drawing a card. Unfortunately, because I'm so bad at math, and study triggers, Matt only drops to 2 and doesn't die, and Mike only takes 10. I then draw because of the Monarch trigger, and I pass my turn. Matt taps an alarmingly large pile of lands to recast his commander, drawing from the Elemental Bond trigger. He then casts the Insult part to Insult to Injury, and he swings his commander at me, and the Carnage Tyrant at Mike. I sacrifice my Evolving Wilds to gain an Elemental token, and I go to find a Snow-Covered Forest. I then sacrifice my three Snow-Covered lands to get three more Elemental tokens, and I block with everything. Mike puts his two dragons and Rakdos in front of the Carnage Tyrant as well. All of my elemental dies to the first strike damage, with one bleeding over from the trample. I then take another 14, and I drop to 13, while Mike drops to 7, and Matt gains 56 life from this swing. He then resolves his commander's trigger, drawing some cards and doing what Dino Daddy does best, making a huge board of dinosaurs at the cost of nothing. Matt also regains the Monarch token, and draws at the end of turn. Mike draws two for turn, and casts Wild Guest, discarding the Spawning Pit, and drawing two. Mike then casts an Ever After, returning a Runescarred Demon and a Combustible Gear Hulk tapped. He picks me for the Gear Hulk trigger, and I give Mike the three cards, hoping for a board wipe. He then goes and tutors for a card. Mike then plays a Bajuka Bog, exiling Matt's Graveyard. And moving to combat, he swings everything he has left at Matt. Unfortunately, I was right earlier, as Matt does have the Teferi's Protection in hand, which he casts. At this point, Mike and I realize quickly that we're dead on the swing back, so we scoop it up to Matt. Game review time. You may think that we prematurely scooped, but honestly, as soon as Matt untapped, he had so much mana with Sakama, he would have been able to blow up all of my board, and basically swing to kill me, and probably Mike at the same time. Even if he hadn't been able to kill both of us, he probably still would have had something like Aestheticism or Heroic Intervention to deal with whatever board wipe was coming up. So, two major mistakes on my part. One, was not spending the extra 30 seconds it would have taken me to count up the extra damage to know if I'd kill Matt or not. The second, was being a bit overly ambitious, sacrificing as many lands as I did to kill Trevor. Trevor's equipment was allowing him to basically start swinging his Zergo into anyone without any kind of blockers, and that was very concerning. He was really the major threat, as Matt was off of his land game that early on. But unfortunately, once Trevor died, Matt quickly became the main threat. I think unfortunately for Mike, he could have been a more controlling presence had he been allowed to have his Balefire Dragon out for longer. It certainly would have been able to help keep Matt in check, but unfortunately Trevor feared it as much as everyone else did. 
I do like how it's kind of reanimator based in Rakdos, so that's always fun to see. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.